So today we are going to start lecture four on helicopter dynamics. And I'm going to introduce some further notation on the rotor as well as the helicopter. So we are going to extend some of this notation into forward flight and also look at the forces and moments, power, torque, and so on. And I'm Dr. Anjan Ganguly. Now this is the rotor in forward flight. So essentially this is the rotor disc. You have the air coming in front at a velocity V. This is an angle T. Here alpha, which is the angle which the rotor disc sees with respect to the velocity V. You have a thrust being generated by the rotor. And now you take this velocity vector V and you create some components. So you get this component here V into cos of alpha, and you get the vertical component here, which is V into sine of this angle alpha. So again, very simple, we have just decomposed this velocity vector into two of its components here. Now, if you now think about it, the velocity of the air going through the rotor disc, it has two components. One component is due to forward flight that is given by V into sine of this angle alpha. And the second component is this component small v, which is the induced velocity or the velocity induced by this rotor disc. So because this rotor is rotating, it essentially adds a velocity to this air coming in. And so the air, when it comes on top of the rotor, it has this velocity here. And when it goes through the rotor, its velocity becomes V sine of this angle alpha plus small v, where small v is the induced velocity. This is a very important part of all rotor dynamics, which we are going to discuss in detail later. And the effect of all this fluid flow is that a thrust is generated by this rotor, which is our main consideration. And that is why we have the rotor. Now let us discuss some of these values in greater detail. So if we look at the value alpha, it's the rotor disc plane angle which the cross section sees. And this is positive for forward tilt. So essentially, as I have mentioned before, you need to tilt the rotor forward so that you generate a thrust and provide a propulsive force to this vehicle. A capital V is the rotor velocity with respect to air. Small v is the induced velocity by the rotor. And this is normal to the disc plane and positive when downward through the disc. So when that happens, you get a positive rotor thrust. So these particular notations you are going to see repeatedly in this course and subject. Now let's go back to this rotor disc here, if you set capital V zero, that would mean there is no forward velocity. And alpha is zero, which would mean the rotor disc is in this direction here. Then essentially you get the hover condition. So in that case, if you rethink this diagram, your component here is going to be simply small v because alpha is going to be zero and sine alpha is going to be zero. And that is going to be the induced velocity in our condition. Now, typically we use some non-dimensional quantities in rotor dynamics and these quantities are used so that we don't keep using notation which is dimensional. So if you're talking of velocity, there are so many different units of velocity you could consider meter per second, miles per hour, and so on. However, if you non-dimensionalize these quantities, then you are bereft of the dimensions and your problem becomes simpler and you can compare across different scenarios. So the first such important quantity is mu, which is the advance ratio. And this is as defined here, the forward velocity V into cos of alpha divided by omega r. 
where of course you now know this is the rotation speed and this is the rotor radius. Similarly, we have a quantity called lambda, the rotor inflow ratio, which is defined as V sine of alpha plus small v, remember small v being the induced velocity at the rotor disc, divided by omega r. And this quantity in the denominator is actually the rotor tip speed when forward blade velocity is zero or in hover condition. So essentially what we are doing is we are dividing the velocity by a velocity. Same thing we are doing here. So since we are dividing two velocities, we are getting these two important non-dimensional parameters. So now let's get back to the rotor disk and look at some of the things which come beside trust. Of course, trust is something which is very much desirable if you want this vehicle to stay in air. But beside the rotor trust, which is normal to the disc plane and positive when going up, you are also going to get two more forces. One is the rotor drag force, which we call H in the disc plane. And this is positive rearward when it is uh, opposing the direction of the forward velocity in the classical sense of drag. The next such force is Y which is the rotor side force in the disc plane, which is given here. This is again positive toward the direction of the advancing side of the rotor. You remember from our previous diagram where that is, that is at size 90 degrees. Now beside that, you also get Q, which is the rotor shaft torque. And this is defined as positive when an external torque is required to turn the rotor. So this is the way a typical helicopter functions is that you essentially need to provide it an external torque to turn the rotor. Now, there is also a mode where a wind turbine functions where essentially the torque is generated by the wind turbine, but we are not going to look at this at the current point. Now, P is the rotor shaft power. So these are two important quantities which are also coming out of the helicopter dynamics and performance problem. So now let us again define some non-dimensional quantities. We typically don't carry these forces by themselves because remember the forces would be in some unit like Newton. And therefore what we do is we create non-dimensional coefficients. So CT is the non-dimensional trust coefficient. We have CH, the H force coefficient, and we have CY, the Y force coefficient. And all these forces are essentially defined, uh, divided by rho A, into omega r whole thing squared. So we will see that this particular term is also a force term and therefore by dividing with this parameter, we are capable of getting non-dimensional values. So just to see that if we take this parameter here and we write all the units out, so density is kg per meter cube, a is meter square, then rotation speed is radian per second, that is squared here, and another meter square. So you get here meter four divided by meter cube, so that's meter, and here you get per second square. Radian has essentially no units. So you are getting kg into meter per second square, which is essentially Newton. So from Newton's law of motion, F is ma, we can write here, this is a force. So essentially, this is of dimension force, and therefore we can use it to non-dimensionalize T, H, and Y. Now, when we want to non-dimensionalize torque, which is somewhat like a moment, we have to add one more R here. So that creates the torque coefficient. And so we have an extra R here, essentially. So this is a force into a moment arm. That's the length. Also, we have CP. The power coefficient which is defined as the power divided by rho a into this term cubed. Now you can show one fact easily that cp is equal to cq and this can be shown by the fact that p is rotation speed into the torque. So this is coming from your basic mechanics 
and therefore if you were to take these two definitions and put them here so you put p is cp into this equals rotation speed into cq into this you will find there will be a cancellation of the extra rotation speed being carried across and you will get cp is cq so this is a very important point here that in many cases you need to get cp and you can get it from cq and vice versa finally three more important parameters which are very useful in helicopter performance as well as dynamics number one is rotor disc loading which is essentially t by a rotor power loading which is the power by thrust and rotor blade loading which is t by a b where a b is the area of a blade so this we can write as t by sigma into a remembering the fundamental definition of sigma and then if we use non-dimensional numbers it becomes ct by sigma so both being non-dimensional quantities here so very frequently when we are comparing two different rotors we compare them using ct by sigma so this rotor blade loading is used to compare different helicopters different vehicles and so on so we don't need to bother about what is the actual weight of the particular vehicle whether it is 5000 kgs or 10000 kgs or 1000 kgs but we have to look at the ct by sigma to tell us how its dynamics is going to be ct by sigma is extremely important in helicopter dynamics and you always compare two helicopters or if you make any changes in a part particular helicopter you have to compare them by looking at the ct by sigma and they should be same in those conditions so that essentially ends lecture 4 i will see you in my next video when we will start discussing structural dynamics aspects which are necessary prerequisite for understanding the further developments in rotor dynamics